Well, you guys should already know what's happening. We are getting a brand new Under Night coming soon. I don't know when, but it's just good to see that we are officially getting a whole new Under Night. As I already stated before on my channel, I love this series and I'm just so happy to see the amount of support that Under Night is now getting now that Under Night is coming to Evo this year and now that we are officially getting the third installment for this awesome series. And on top of that, this installment it's also coming to the Switch. And I know a lot of you guys are on the Switch that have been wanting to have Under Night to be on the go. And now we're actually going to get Under Night on the go. So it's fucking amazing, man. I wanted to make this video to convey exactly what I believe should be included in the next game. I also want to talk about briefly about Cross Tag and what's been going on with me since it's been a long time, about a month. In case if you guys didn't know, if you don't follow me on Twitter or you're not on Blazecord, which is my Discord server, the links will be down below. By the way, I've been going through some personal life shit, so I had to take a step back. I was actually in production of doing a video, but that had to be halted because of that. I do apologize for my lack of uploads. I'm going to try harder not to be so stagnant on my channel. I want to be more focused for this year. I can say for right now that I am in a good place. I wasn't before. But now I can honestly say that I'm pretty much 100%. So I know I've been rambling on, but with that said, let's cue the fucking intro. So with any new fighting game comes the question of what are going to be the new features when it comes to the gameplay department, when it comes to how many new playable characters, and all the other stuff, like maybe even more modes. Well, I've been doing a lot of research into the game's story when it comes to the possible new characters, and I have about like five characters that I believe could have a possibility of making it in. I think the number one character that has the biggest probability of making into Under Night and Birth CLR has to be the main antagonist himself, Qion. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, but <laughs> Qion is the main antagonist and he's pretty much the uh, sibling for Linux. And you could already guess as to why he has so much story relevance. He's the main antagonist for a reason. I'm not sure what this new Under Knight is going to be in terms of story. Is it going to be like in the, the later phase of the entire storyline for Under Knight? Or is it going to be like four phases and this is the third phase? I don't know. But we should expect that in the story that Qion will indeed will indeed play a stronger role in the story because he was kind of like he was kind of more ambiguous you, you didn't really see a lot happening with this character just a lot of characters mentioning his name and whatnot not really showing much of Kuyon it's more of the Hilda amnesia show so I'm thinking now we're gonna see more of Kuyon and his involvement with Lene and him pulling behind the strings and maybe more of his backstory. And if that's the case, then I can see Qion being playable, definitely. I also think Surugi has a chance of being playable as well. He actually has some shield ability. And in a game like Under Night, where we have plenty of zoning characters, we have rushdown characters, grappler characters, but there's not that many characters who really specialize in defense, you know what I mean? Like, like really a lot of armor and stuff like that. The closest to a character that has like a shield and armor is obviously Wagner, but it's really like in the install and she's mostly known for rushdown, not really defensive. So maybe Surugi can be the type of character that can offer for a defensive mid-range playstyle. I think this would be really healthy for the character roster to add more diversity into it. So I definitely wouldn't mind it at all. The third character I have on my list on the potential new characters for this sequel is Sakurai. Sakurai is the creator of Sm I'm sorry. <laughs> Sakurai is his uh, gender bent Hibiki looking ass, I'm sorry. <laughs> that is an assistant for Wagner. And apparently she has abilities that pertains to her bow. So she could easily be a zoning character, probably take a few notches from Yukari's playstyle since she used a bow in back in Ultimates. So I could probably see Sakura being playable for that reason. I feel like this game has uh, plenty of zoners already like Carmine and Phonon. I wouldn't really classify Elknum as a zoner, I mean, yeah, she has zoning tools, but I still say she's like kind of more hybrid of rushdown and zoner in a way. I do feel like Sakurai could have a nice place in this roster to have another zoning character, probably more true to zoning, just using the bow and whatnot. The fourth character I have is Joker. 
Oh god. If, if Joker from Persona Five actually got into this game, I wouldn't know how to feel. But anyways, not not that Joker, obviously. Even though Joker's in fucking everything now. But anyways, there's a character called Joker, and we don't really know much about this character other than the fact that he apparently uses card ability. Apparently, Joker only made an appearance in issue 155 of Arcadia magazine back in April 2013 as an avatar for one of the article writers. The writer talks in the side article about how he was surprised that French Bread agreed to designing his avatar after he asked him as a joke. I think that's pretty fucking hilarious if they actually go ahead and actually try to realize his character, even though he meant it just as a joke, but it makes sense because Joker, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. But, I, I, but honestly, man, I really think this type of character would really work well in a night system. But apparently in the article, the designer had three attacks in mind for him, which are called Damn Doom, Come On, and Joker. So original. But, <laughs> but for Damn Doom, apparently Joker leaves a card on mid-screen, and when the opponent touches it, they receive a random status element, such as poison. So Joker would easily be like a gimmick-heavy character. It's kind of like Guilty Gear-esque because it's so gimmick-heavy, you know? So you can like inflict poison and maybe... There's more other cards you can use that can afflict other statuses other than just poison. So that could be really interesting in itself. Another move of his will be Come On, a counter move which raises the opponent to mid-air or unsuccessful hit. Pretty much the counter that Enkidu has, it will pretty much be the same way. Uh, and Joker, the actual name of this character, into a, a fucking ability. Is described as a move that throws 13 cards into midair in contact. He takes a stance that finishes the fuck. This fucking type. What the fuck? I'm assuming that this is has to be like his special, like one of his special moves. You know what I mean? It, it feels like that. So, so I think that's what it is. A special. The chances of this character being actually playable is pretty much low to none, honestly. But if it happens, I wouldn't be opposed to it either. <laughs> and the last character in my list is Uzuki. You probably already know this character. Nicknamed The Undertaker and has been mentioned in the story a few times. She is one of the leaders for Amnesia, I believe. So she has some weight in the overall story. So I can definitely see this character having a much stronger role in the next phase of the story and therefore being a playable character in Undernight, possibly. I have no idea how she would fight. They don't really describe her abilities, but apparently she's pretty damn strong, so... And her abilities have something to do with being an Undertaker, so maybe it's gonna be like some death, dark magic or some shit, because she has this witch vibe going on. Maybe like Nine or some shit like that. But yeah, I can definitely see Uzuki being playable in the next game. I just hope the new characters, whatever they may be, offer more diversity into this already really good solid roster. This roster currently has 20, so I can expect maybe 24 or 25 characters at most. Or maybe even 26 if they're feeling generous, I don't know. <laughs> I also hope that with this new Undernight installment, that we get more versus teams. I really feel like there's not that many versus teams. We only have Cross Thoughts, which is uh, a Chaos versus Gordo theme, and and shit, I forgot the name of the fucking Hyde and Seth one. It's a banger nonetheless though. I, but I really feel like there should be a little bit more versus Dean. One of which should be Wagner versus Gordo. They should have a Dean because Gordo has beef with Wagner for killing Roger, which was his friend that worked with him. Uh, another one could be Wagner versus Odier because they work for the same organization, but they have this kind of rivalry going on. So that could work, honestly. And um, another one could possibly be Enkidu versus Walstein. And Linne versus Kion. Assuming Kion gets playable and so there's probably more versus themes I'm missing, but um, those are the ones I can think of the moment. When it comes to new modes, I honestly don't know. Um because I think currently Undernight has a lot of modes. It has like time attack, arcade. You always need arcade, so it's good to see that it has arcade. But I do feel like for the next one. The story mode should be an actual story mode. Like, don't get me wrong, like, Chronicles is a story, but it's basically the events before of what happens that transpires in the arcade. And I want a story mode more focused on the actual storyline, you know what I mean? So hopefully we can get that and no more of the Chronicles. The Chronicles was nice, but now it's time to finally get to more of the later phases of the story. 
But outside of that, all I can really think of the possible new modes is maybe mission mode. But I'm not really fiending for any new modes. However, I will say that, and I know, I already know this ain't gonna happen, but please put in a sprite color palette editor in this game. I will be on that 24 seven, holy shit. That would be amazing, but I already know that's not gonna happen. You can already do that on PC because it's PC, you know, it's modding, all that shit. But it'd be nice to actually have that in game so I can also do that on on my PS4 or if I get it for the Switch as well. But that's pretty much it for modes. I'm not looking for a lot of new modes, but um, but I wouldn't be opposed to any new interesting modes. And lastly, the gameplay. I feel like the gameplay overall right now is amazing. There's hardly any flaws that I really find to be addressing. Honestly, the gameplay for me, it's not broken, so don't fix it, but just like improve on it, you know? And and that's what ST did. It improved on the overall gameplay mechanics. So I'm hoping that in the third one, they improve it even more and just uh, just fine tune the mechanics. But, but the overall core of the mechanics will be the same and not a complete overhaul. So basically just like add on adjustments that improves on the already established game mechanic. And now that we got all of that out of the way, I did notice that a lot of people been pretty much asking or at least requesting for this game to be an update to where you can update from ST to CLR. I want that update too to be possible, but I feel like it might not be the case unfortunately. Mainly because it's also coming for the Switch. So that kind of leads me to be skeptical because think about it, like let's just say um, you can upgrade to the new Undernight with, with ST, but for the Switch, there's no other Undernight to upgrade from. So you would have to be purchasing the newest Undernight and retail price in comparison to those who just upgraded in PS4 who are going to just get like a little discount because it's just an upgrade. I just don't see the upgrade happening honestly for that reason but I could be wrong and I wouldn't be mad if I was wrong in this case but it just feels a little weird and I just don't see it happening that's all. But overall I just know that this game is going to be amazing. I'm just waiting for new information to pop out. We still don't really know exactly what this new game is going to entail but Regardless, I'm hyped because I'm um, being just blunt and honest, man. I'm kind of, it's it, it reached to a point where I'm kind of like fucking looking for the next fighting game to really get into. And Under Night and Birth ST is that, but being honest, this game has been out for a while and now people are starting to really fuck with this game. But seeing how now we are going to get a third installment is more of a reason to finally really just say, all right. I'm going to commit to Undernight fully now. Seeing how this this series is going to have a good future, <laughs> you know what I mean? And um and I also before I forget, I do want to mention about Cross Tag. It is confirmed that we got our release date for the update. It's going to be on May 21st. And I have to say that I'm actually really happy on the way they are carrying this update. So apparently for those like myself who ordered like the Lux edition or an edition that got all the character packs or stuff like that. We are going to get Seth, Naruto, Teddy, and Hart all free of charge along with the patch. And I think that's that's actually redeeming. You know, I, I'll, I'll let them pass. I still believe that this update coming so late is inexcusable. But I will admit and say that it's actually fair. I ain't going to lie, man. So good shit on Arc Season Works for that. I will be still streaming around the time the update drops but I will need some time to learn Seth, obviously, but once I'm ready, I will be streaming. I will announce that on Twitter. I will announce that on Blaze Court, so you can follow me if you wanna have some matches. I will be fucking with Seth Heavy. Uh, most likely going to run Seth and Jin because as much as I enjoy playing Hazma, his assists are not that good, admittedly, and Seth is gonna be one of those characters that, that is going to need a good assist to get in, so, most likely either Jin or Blake, but I'm leaning towards Jin. We have to wait and see until Seth comes out. But I'm really looking forward to seeing how Seth plays. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I just want to give a quick shout out to everyone that is on Blaze Cord. You guys are fucking amazing. Over 200 members. Absolutely incredible. I'm so grateful for you guys. And you guys are awesome. You guys are patient and understanding. You guys really help me out a lot. So truthfully, I'm very, very thankful to have you guys, man. But seriously, thank you from the bottom of my heart. It really means a lot. And in case you didn't know, I do have a Discord server called Blaze Cord. It will be in the description below this video. I'm not gonna lie, like the Discord server can be wild at times. <laughs> 
but not too wild but like you know it just be a little wild at times but it's fun though so i'm just letting you guys know but that's the best way to keep in touch with me and with that said i'll catch you guys later let me know how you feel about this new undernight coming soon in the comments below and i'll catch you guys later peace out have a good day